Hey, friendo, Steve here. Hey, Lars. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steven Larson. Available wherever podcasts can be found. And of course, tape live of the Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Steve and Larson. A lot to talk about today, including the road after Victory Road, but before Bound for Glory. So whatever that road is, we're going to talk about the impact results from last night. It's like the impact, uh, the, uh, the 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 off ramp from Victory Road. <clears throat> yeah, last night much of it was a rest stop, though. <laughs> Felt that way, save for the fir- the first match and the main event. Everything else in between, yeah. It was a killer main event. I love this pick your oh, poison that, stuff. That main event was spectacular. Yeah, that was great. They just had a whole monsters ball match on a regular episode of TV. Oh, it which was great. Great. It yeah. was great. Uh, anyways, uh, along with our impact review we're going to be talking about some concerns wwe might have with randy orton's injury uh aew bring in an even more free agents open the floodgates aew says we welcome your weak tired whatever yeah. <laughs> all the free including agents. a name including a name that can get steve really excited oh yeah man oh boy oh boy uh we're going to talk about the long anticipated vince mcmahon documentary and what the status this is a new one no this is a new one this isn't the netflix one this is a new one. I get the Netflix one is well. We'll talk about it. We're gonna a right. a Vince McMahon. Look, any documentary on Vince McMahon is long awaited because <laughs> we haven't had one and we want one. Darn it! Gotcha. Not one produced by WWE. We're gonna talk about that. But first, man, it's been uh, what has it been like twenty five days or so? Uh, something since, like that. Since yeah. Brawl Out, Muffin yeah. Mania, Scrum Gate, the Gripe Bomb. Yeah. Uh, and everybody's still suspended. That's why yeah. AEW's bringing all these free agents because their big names have all been suspended. The Elite, Kenny Omega, uh, the Young Bucks, and uh, CM Punk. And, of course, they're the biggest name of them all, Ace Steel. Ace Steel, I know. All suspended. They've all been suspended. We, and we, we haven't heard much. No, we haven't. We got an update on that, Larson. Yeah, from Dave Melser. That's what he had to say in the latest Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Quote regarding the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. They all hadn't heard anything from the company, at least as of a few days ago. The belief is that their situation is on hold pending potential legal action, mm. which, unless cleared up, could delay things for some time. But there is also a second holdup mm. that wasn't that hasn't been made clear. Mm. So if the legal action is some sort of lawsuit, that could take a while. That could take a bit. If they're waiting for a potential lawsuit to work its way through the courts and reach a determination, that could potentially take months. Longer that, than that. That could take a while. I mean, I don't know. Like, didn't Matt Jackson on that shoe thing the other day said that, yeah, you guys will probably see us soon. Yeah. Um, so, I mean. But again, I, soon is, is, is a nebulous thing. A yeah. nebulous term. You know? <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, look, it's it's. I don't think it's out of pocket for us to, to speculate a little bit. I If there was a lawsuit filed, isn't that like public info? Like, wouldn't we know that if there was a you lawsuit so, yeah. filed? Yeah. yeah. Um, so at this point, seemingly that's not the case. However, um, maybe all sides are discussing, hey, you've suspended us now for, uh, you know, 25 days. Uh, how are we going to deal with that? There's, I mean, look, I get it, but there's just probably a lot to, to work through here. And, and I imagine Tony Khan wants to do his damnedest to not – have it spill out into the public forum all that dirty laundry now that he's got some positive momentum on his side you know yeah yeah probably i mean to a degree uh, dirty laundry getting out in public is kind of what started a lot of this mess and i doubt he wants to continue that particular trajectory yeah exactly exactly um i mean uh, as far as what this legal action could be i guess you know the, the first thought would potentially be lawsuits mm-hmm, yeah i mean i guess there's potential there for Although there, when Fightful followed up on it with the local police, there was no police report filed, so you wouldn't think there'd be any criminal. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, proceedings. Yeah. And it could be just be there. as simple as, all right, well, there's contracts we have to maneuver mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. in the event that someone says goodbye to AEW. You yeah. know? Yeah. Um, that um, being said, nothing would shock me in terms of like if we hear next week. A, there's a lawsuit, B, there, or, or or there's a settlement, or there's this, there's that, the other. Like, who knows how this is going to end up, you know? I know. So I know. Uh, so hopefully hopefully it's wrapped up quickly and and fairly uh, neatly. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. I, I, I miss I, – we got a little taste of Kenny Omega back, and then he saved a dog and got bitten and was gone. Yeah. I want, I want my the dog, Kenny Omega. The dog wasn't the one that bit him, though. 
<laughs> we should clarify that was not yes. the dog. It wasn't yeah. Larry that bit him. No, no, Larry did not bite him from what we understand. <laughs> but again, you know, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Uh, anyway, maybe a steel and, and Larry are working in co- coordination with each other. Maybe they were doing some bite the dog fakes you out and thinks yeah. that you're going to get bit by yeah, the dog, but no, go. it's a steel. It's a, a steel. Oh, yeah. They're both just like, Hey, let's practice on bilk boats. Let's practice our biting <laughs> technique. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah. So hopefully they'll come back soon. Uh, anyways, uh, let's talk about this. So as you mentioned in the intro, Vince McMahon has had at least one documentary that was being worked on him before the whole, you know, NDA gate or whatever you want to call that NDA mania. Uh, and that was like through, I believe, Bill Simmons uh, yeah, uh, production, production company yeah. And, yeah. and Netflix. But now PW Insider is reporting that Vice TV. That's right. The same people bringing you uh, 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 Dark Side of the Ring and now the the Territories show, which Tales from the Territories. I which, want which to great. get into that, man. I want to. Yeah. I have not seen an episode. I want to get into that. PW Insider is confirmed with multiple sources who were interviewed for the for the project. The documentary will cover Vince McMahon's career, including his retirement slash resignation from WWE in the wake of the articles published by the Wall Street Journal. PWInsider.com has confirmed the documentary will air this October. That is that's, literally that's a date. Soon. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. That's, well, yeah, the first day of October is tomorrow. So right. within the next 30 days, 31 days, yeah. roughly, this thing is apparently going to be done yeah. and ready for air. Wow. That's pretty quick. I mean, even if they said, all right, July, what was it, 22nd, whatever, the day Vince retired. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Green light it. Let's go. Yeah. Three-month turnaround is pretty quick. It is really quick. Interviews, yeah. to do post, all that. People are probably chomping at the bit. That's entirely possible. Chomping at the bit for this one. Um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of it, though, too, is, you know, I, I think I think uh, Real Sports on HBO, they had something. I read, I've read that they have something in the works about Vince. I'm sure there's a race to be the first. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, outlet to get something up about, about Vince McMahon in the wake of his re- retirement slash reg- resignation. So. You know, dude, it also probably will provide, I wonder how much this is ever thought about with streaming services, because as we've seen, like, like there is a whole like Mormon docu phase, uh, you know, on Hulu, Netflix, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Woodstock 99 had multiple yeah, documentaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Firefest oh, well, Fire had two. Yeah, they had were two. At the same time. Yeah. So there seems to be a thing where if one thing's popular, they'll just reload. Another streaming service will reload, and they'll re- and they'll do their own version of it. I wonder how many mm. of those streaming services are like. Okay, well, let's see how this Vice one is going to work out. And if it just completely tanks, nobody likes it. Yeah, we don't have to continue production on this or whatever. But something Maybe. tells me this is going to be a pretty big deal. I think so too. It, it, like part of it was the the Bill Simmons Netflix one was being made with WB's cooperation. So you, you would have to assume that at least initially Vince was going to have some degree of oversight on that one. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, now who knows? They can't really make a documentary about Vince and include and not include. Yeah, right. You know what happened most recently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how they would. Assuming Vince would have some sort of say still, I don't know if he does, how they would maneuver through all that, don't know. I know those dudes are doing Tales from the Territories right now, but like, Mm -hmm. isn't it kind of a shame that Vice wouldn't go directly to them and be like, listen, season, what is it, would they be on four right now if they did another Dark Side season? Mm -hmm. Season Mm -hmm. four, ten episodes on Vince. Yeah. Because it's like and it's like uh, Infinity War and Endgame. Like yeah, no, the I entire know. first uh, three seasons of 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 Dark Side were basically Vince McMahon in the background, you know, or sometimes in the foreground, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, orchestrating, uh, you know, uh, the world of professional wrestling to to his uh, uh, design. Yep. And uh, and yeah, like let that be a whole giant series on Dark Side. I mean, they could still potentially do that i mean uh, you'd assume that uh, this thing on vice would probably be an hour you know fill an hour time slot so be sure. 44 minutes yeah so you can easily do 10 hour you know 10 part dark side of the ring on vince you know if you start with uh like black saturday you think they'd even be able to cover like i know obviously you can get into like if if, if they only go an hour, i would think that they'd want two out of it well, I don't know. Maybe who knows? Because my God, like this could. I mean, like, there's plenty there. Yeah, there's a ton there. My goodness, there's a lot. Anyways, let's talk about this, man. Yeah, AW just loading up. You know, one thing that they they they're obviously lacking right now is enough talent to go around. <laughs> Larson, 
So obviously they need more, right? Uh, apparently Tony Khan thinks so. They are stretched thin right now. Yeah, they, yeah there's, there's not a whole lot of depth in the locker room, is there? <laughs> no. um, I will say this, though. Bandito had himself a hell of a showing sure. on Wednesday against Chris Jericho, main event of this week's Dynamite. And Dave Meltzer is reporting that Bandito was offered a full-time AEW deal after that Ring of Honor title bout. PW Insider has some additional details stating, quote, PW Insider has independently confirmed this is the case as far as him getting a contract offer. The company wants to sign Bandito. Tony Khan was seen enthusiastically hugging mm. and greeting Bandito on the, the AEW entrance stage after his match with uh, ROH champion Chris Jericho in Philly after Dynamite went off the air. You got you got to stop with the hugs, man. The, look, look where the hugs got you in the first place, man. No more um, hugs. So, Steve, get excited for this. So, PW Insider is also reporting that self-proclaimed free agent, one of your favorite wrestlers, Juice Robinson. Oh, we're still doing the sarcasm thing. Okay, good. Oh, there's sarcasm? There's no sarcasm here. Has garnered interest from AEW saying this, quote, PWInsider.com was also told that after his match against John Moxley this past Wednesday, Philadelphia, there is, a, there is massive interest in bringing in Juice Robinson as often as possible, make him a regular for the company. Robinson works regularly for New Japan Pro Wrestling as member of Bullet Club, but I don't know whether this is this is PW Insider, not me. Uh, I don't know whether he's contractually signed there or not. I mean, they said all over the place on Dynamite that that Juice is a free agent. I think Juice he's has said, said multiple yeah. times that he's a free agent now. And I want I want to clarify something. What? I don't know the man. I'm yeah. sure he's a delight. There are there have been promos I've seen of his in, in New Japan that I've really, really been like, oh, this could I'm fine with this in this moment. But by and large, his character does nothing for me in in most in like ninety percent of the iterations. Yes, I am being sarcastic with Steve. I think Steve I do Juice Robinson. I do think that he's a really good wrestler. I think that he is a really, really, really good wrestler. Um, and so I, I have no problem with like his matches, right? It's not like, I'm, I'm not going to dog anybody else, but like there's other wrestlers out there that I probably talked about. That I'm like, God, I can't, I can't, I'll bring this guy up only because I, I firmly believe he needs a lot more reps, but Ridge Holland is a guy that yeah. sometimes I get nervous when he's in the ring because I've seen a couple times, you know, the big E thing, his own like blown out legs that one time in NXT. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I get, I'm like, Oh, be careful, dude. Juice is not that he is a great wrestler. He yeah, really he's an accomplished is accomplished wrestler. Yeah. He yes. Is. I've just, there's never been anything about his character. That I've been like, Oh, I want to watch more of this. Yeah. But yeah. you know what? Good for him. If that's the case. Yeah. Um, but there is the other thing, Larson, mm. Uh, you know, we were we were being pretty sarcastic there at the beginning of this segment. They are loaded with people, and a lot of them they, they do not use. I know, I know, and that that is an issue in AEW. You already got people who are rumored to be a a, a little bit gr grumpy or pretty darn grumpy about not getting enough TV time, and then you bring in even more people. I mean, Bandito's great. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. He's a welcome addition to any company. Mm -hmm. Um, but. When you already have a pretty loaded roster and not enough TV minutes for people who are already pretty massively established names in the industry, I don't know if going out and signing even more people is 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 the right plan to take. Like Bandito is a fantastic wrestler. He really is. Yeah. And I'd be fine if he's on my TV every week. That's great. But AEW already has a lot of phenomenal wrestlers. They're, they're not like at that level when you're getting signed by AEW or WWE or New Japan. There, it's very rare that you're not a really good wrestler. Like there are oh, yeah. so there's so much really really good talent out there, um, and and more out there in the independent ranks. That it's like, man, you you can't be signing every everything. You can't sign everybody. You can't do it all. Because yep. there is, you know, when you say, oh, there's a, they, we can't have two women's matches because there's limited time on TV because you keep on signing everybody and, and you keep on putting matches on with people who you're just sort of bringing in as opposed to using any number of people on your actual roster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a situation where they were, they were doing a much better job of utilizing people they had signed and people aren't disappearing from TV for months at a time. Um, then, yeah, sure. Yeah. And you've shown the ability to to regularly have creative for a vast majority of wrestlers and then cycle them on TV to keep the stories going and, and get them on TV off enough to have matches. You know, I mean, I say this all the time. Attitude error from a storyline perspective was very hit or miss. 
but basically everybody had a story. Everybody had something going on, yeah. And I know the roster wasn't as vast as it is now at WBR and AEW, but you know, we give Vince Russo a lot of crap for a lot of terrible story ideas. Mm -hmm. One thing he seemingly, he and Vince McMahon tried to do during that time was to make sure, okay, everybody's going to have a story. Whether it's good or not, it's another question entirely. But if you're on TV, especially, there's a reason you're on TV. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like you look at that one segment where Andrade, I forget if Roosh was there. And I know this past week on TV, it was, it was it's difficult to assess that one week simply because the hurricane, some, a lot of people weren't there. Evidently, yeah, yeah, Fightful yeah. Report said that there was supposed to be a Samojo Wardlow feud starting between uh, uh, Swerve and Keith Lee. So that's mm -hmm. kind of cool, but that didn't happen. So a lot of people weren't there. It's hard to assess that. But even if you look at that one backstage segment with Butcher and Blade, Private Party, Andrade, I forget if Roosh was there or not, and uh, and Jose. No, the Roosh assistant. wasn't there. The he one, wasn't the one there. just just on Wednesday. No, Roosh wasn't there. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. If Roosh was present for that, he would have just been put into that backstage segment. Is my yeah, point. I know. I know. And you I have, know. I mean, how many wrestlers I just did I just mention there? And then Matt Hardy comes in, and it's like you're already you're not like. Even if Dynamite was was loaded with everybody there, that probably still would have just been the segment. You don't have time on TV for all the people you already have. Why are you bringing in more people? I don't think, like from a business perspective, I, I, I hate saying it this way, but if you're Tony Khan, you look at your roster and you're like, I've got everybody I need to move needles. Mm -hmm. Is Juice going to be the guy that, is going to continue to do this. Is Bandito going to be a guy that's like, shouldn't you be focusing on, okay, we've been, we've been hovering at like a million for this long. Now I got to start focusing on stories and not just bring every time you bring a new person in, it's a clean slate. It's like, <laughs> it's like we can play about NXT 2.0. You guys have built up all this stuff. And then you just start with a clean slate. It takes time to build those people up so exactly. that they can become a draw. They can become a needle mover yep. because nobody else knows who they are outside of, the internet wrestling community you know it's like yeah, yeah we we know who bandito is obviously we know who juice robinson is but yeah. the cable tv audience a lot of those people are like yeah, i don't know who these people are and yeah i Might can google not, them yeah. really quick but that's yeah. sort of not the point the point is they're not featured in stories that we have become invested in in aew for us to like really want to tune in to see more bandito more juice robinson you yeah. have people there who have histories who have relationships use them mm-hmm mm-hmm mm -hmm. Yeah, thousand percent, thousand percent. Uh, before we move on to talk about Impact this week, let's talk about Randall Keith Orton. So he's been out of action since late May due to a back injury that required surgery. In the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, Melser states that quote, "There's a lot of concern regarding Orton's back injury and its severity." So let's go back to January of this year, where uh, Orton was being interviewed by Fox Two Now in St. Louis, I believe, in advance of the Royal Rumble, and he talked about the toll. RKOs throughout the year has been taken hot on his body. And these transcripts come to you from comicbook.com. This is what uh, Randy had to say. Quote, I've been doing it, RKO, for a very long time. I kind of wish I could go back in time and create a finishing move that didn't entail me jumping up as high as I can and landing on my back after doing that a couple thousand times over the last few decades. I'm starting to feel it now. Nothing that we've heard about Randy's back surgery injury has necessarily said this is because of doing the RKOs for 20 years. This is just a quote from him saying doing the RKO for 20 years has taken a toll on his body. Yeah, yeah. So I want to make sure that, that we have not he heard like a clear indication that mm -hmm. RKOs have led to this injury. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, dude, he, he's a big, big deal. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he's been doing it for a very, very long time. So uh, he's, he's doing some of the best work of his career, like oh, the year, year and a half yeah. prior. Yeah, he's probably more over now than he ever was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's been wildly over a lot. Oh yeah. Um so uh so yeah. I mean that's you know it's 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 proper to be concerned about that and and oh, yeah. you know obviously we, we wish him best for whatever mm -hmm. happens, you know. Mm -hmm. Go get that surgery and feel good and if if you want to come back, come back. Exactly. Yeah, the the health and well-being after yeah. wrestling is far more important than <laughs> that our, our the enjoyment our enjoyment of his work on television. All right, let's take a quick break here to get a word from our sponsor, Better Help. You know, Larson What's that, Steve? More professional athletes are speaking out about the importance of mental health these days, and we've seen several top stars take time away to tend to their own mental well-being. But pro athletes aren't the only ones who need to take care of their mental health, and therapy is the best way for anybody to stay in peak mental shape. 
Yeah, I've been there myself. There was a point in my life about 20 years ago where I was dealing with severe anxiety, and I realized that I needed to go to therapy. But back then, finding the right therapist was tough, and it took me quite a while. But once I found a therapist I felt comfortable speaking with, I started gaining the tools necessary to better deal with my anxiety. Now, BetterHelp is a great option because it makes the process of finding a therapist much more convenient and accessible. The whole process is done online, so you don't have to leave your house. And all you got to do to get connected with the therapist is fill out a quick survey. Plus, you can switch therapists at any time. So when you're ready to feel at the top of your mental health game, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash raw today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash raw. I bring up the RKO thing because if he just come back, came back from a, a major back injury and surgery, yeah, right. if he comes back, if he'll have to change his finish. Dude, not a chance. No. His finish is so Mm-mm. such a part of him. And if he can't, what if, what if the doctor says, yeah, you can go back to wrestling. You can't do the RKO anymore. Then he's going to retire. You can't. You can't. You can, it, He has made that so synonymous. You can do yep. meet and greets. Uh, you can do, I don't start see him doing, Starcast. Doing, I don't see him doing commentary, but like start a podcast, do Starcast, yeah. whatever. The RKO is synonymous. And it's not like, oh, he can't. It's like asking Austin to stop doing the stunner. Mm-hmm. It's that synonymous with who he it is. Really is. It really is. Yeah. A couple people are here in chat are bringing up the punt. It's not the same. Not the same thing. The punt was never was never a, a meme like yeah. RKO has 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 been. I also, dude, I kind of suspect as well. Like, if it was a, if it was a different move, like for example, the leg drop. You know how Hogan always talked about how yeah, that yeah. like messed up his hips and, and it went up yeah, his yeah. back and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're a wrestler, you're taking back you know flat back bumps anyways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like I don't know. I'm not a wrestler, obviously, but I would think you know slamming your your back down on the mat versus you know falling on your back on the mat is probably not that different in terms of an RKO versus a, a bump. But I don't yeah, know what I, I know. That could be. That could be. So like I, I would just think that like if he, if he says yeah you can go back to wrestling with no RKO it's like sir do you know what wrestling is? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm landing on my back a lot actually. You can wrestle again, but you can't you can't take any back bumps. Well, you can't right. wrestle. Okay, well. Can I run no ropes? Oh, yeah. No, you can't do that any, either. He's like, right, yeah. Well, there, there's this Randy ex- gets his wish of just having matches full of headlocks. Yeah. He's like, oh, there's this uh, fellow I see named Zack Sabre Jr. Can you do what he does? Give it a shot. <laughs> Start over. <laughs> Clean slate for RKO. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, let's talk about Impact Wrestling. There was like a 30-minute on and no more promo during it. Oh, my gosh. What's up that with that, dude? Painful. That was painful. <laughs> That was pain. <laughs> I dude, I I couldn't. I just, I just did the th- my my Chromecast. The YouTube app on Chromecast has a phenomenal fast forward function. Oh, that's nice. Where it gives the, you the little preview thing on desktop. It doesn't have that good of a fast forward. Function. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's the you little, have to little scrub a line there. You get the little thumbnail just to kind of see like if that matches or that that segment's still happening. But yeah, you can't really scrub through it all that well it's well no i mean that's that's what i get too i scrub and i see action 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 and then when i see somebody getting their hand raised i'm like oh there you go back there you go okay let's see what the finish was yeah Yeah. um (laughs) because i mean do i really need to see all of delirious versus black taurus wasn't that on this wasn't that on this yeah Yeah, that was my god this you took notes on this entire i don't know more thing I shouldn't have. I was like, okay, this can't be that long. You need to ask uh, Bill going in raw for a raise or something, dude. My goodness. That's too much. All right. That's too much. I'll just give myself a larger cut then. There you go. (laughs) Well, just don't take it out of mine, but go ahead. Well, that's that's, that's the problem. Um, Main event, spectacular. is Monsters all match between Mosh Slamovich and Alley Catch. And holy shit, this was great. Wowie, wow. Yeah, dude, no. Fantastic. The the whole, this build... Uh, it's it's a very clever one. Jordan Grace and uh, and Masha Slamovich. They're trying to make this as big a deal as possible. I suspect Masha is probably going to win that title at a at Bound for yeah. Glory. Yeah, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, this pick your poison thing. It could. I mean, they've done it before. Uh, but it's it's. I love it. It's very inspired. And the fact that the fact that you know Masha chose. Um, oh, what's oh, their Max. name? Yeah, 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 the yeah, Maxi Impaler was great because that was just like gnarly. 
And then and then to respond, Jordan Grace chooses Alley Catch in a monsters ball match, just on normal impact TV. Yeah. We yeah. get that match. And it was phenomenal. It was so it was good. Spectacular. It was yeah. so good. It yeah. So, so good. I like that. And the, the funny thing is, like these pick your poisons. I'm like, they're kind of going to overshadow the actual match. I'm sure the actual match is going to be great. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But it's like a monsters ball match. Oh, that's great. You're bringing in these great names here. Um, yeah, no, I, I thought I thought that was really cool. I, I really enjoy this build. Everything from, you know, building up Masha from opponent to opponent, giving them their death warrant, you know, and then taking them down. And then they've elevated that. You know, mm-hmm. she stepped her game up with the death warrant thing, but she has like a whole death warrant on a on a freaking wall. Wall. I yeah. Know. And uh, I think they've done a great job with this feud. It's been really it's been a real big highlight of impact lately. It has. It has. It's been a lot of fun. Um, otherwise, yeah, I mean, I guess they're setting up some stuff for for Bound for Glory. But yeah, this Honor No More uh, time vampire right in the middle of the show. Oh my gosh, yeah. It was just too much. It was really, really long, yeah. I don't think putting a mic in Eddie Edwards' hands and having him fill 20 minutes is really the, the best way to, to come up with riveting television. And that's not, I'm not trying to slight Eddie Edwards. It's hard to fill up, for anybody to fill up 20 minutes of, with talking. Yeah. Um, but, because uh, he's, he's a really good wrestler. The story, the, the problem is, the story is just so thin. It is. It's every segment, every talking segment, it's the same thing over and over. There's almost no comically. Build. Yeah, almost comically. Yeah. Yeah. There's no variation. There's no layers. It's just more or less the same thing. Mm-hmm. Impact doesn't want us here. There's a war going on. Josh, you got to pick which side of the war. And if you don't, I'm going to beat you. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. He also runs down PCO every week. With like, it still doesn't make any sense. I mean, yeah. especially I understand that PCO and Vincent lost at Victory No More, uh, Victory Road, Victory No More. Um, <laughs> it was Victory No More for them. That'll that'll be maybe what they call themselves after Ed Edwards loses a Bound for Glory. Um, at least PCO was dressed up nice. He had the the blazer on. That's how he was dressed for uh, for Victory Road as well. Yeah, he had his business his business suit he's, on. He's, he's trying to look at, make himself look more trying. more respectable. And he just doesn't understand. He's like a puppy. He doesn't understand why he's being yelled at. You know, he just starts doing. He starts wagging his proverbial tail. And it's like, is I mean, he, what is, is what he is, getting turned on right now by Eddie Edwards? What is, what is PCO? At him? And like the 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 inherent contradiction to what Ed Edwards was saying on Impact, where he was getting on PCO for not doing his job and softening softening up Motor City Machine Guns for OGK for a match three weeks from now, <laughs> yeah. versus. PCO stepping up to soften up Heath yeah. in advance of Ed Edwards' match the following Friday, the next day yeah. at Victory Road. It just doesn't make any sense. It's like, dude, if somebody came out of nowhere, especially somebody in my faction, and and put th- and and went through that match, the one him and Heath went through, which again on regular TV you have just the most brutal match. Yeah. I'd be like, hey man, you're getting promoted, you're getting a raise. I know. Yeah, you're my instead, you're my number one guy and, now. Instead, he's like, "No, you don't do this unless I tell you to do this." I was yeah. like, "No, this is this is the kind of guy you want in your faction. Someone who who'll step and say, yeah, I'll I'll take this match and I'll I'll beat this guy up for you in advance of your match you have the next day.' Yeah, that you're saying is so important to you. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it feels like Eddie Edwards is trying to sabotage his own faction. Yeah, I wonder if I wonder if they think anybody thinks about it this deep. Does anybody else review Impact? <laughs> they're like, I, mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, they're like, look, guys, we're out there, just you know, we're, we're out there. But no, man, this stuff has to make sense. Look, if we're gonna review this sense. stuff, we're gonna review this stuff. It's got to make sense. Make it make sense. Got to make it, it. It doesn't make any sense. No sense at all. Yeah. Uh, let's just dive into it. Kicked off with uh, Chris Bay and Ace Austin. Versus uh, this, the, this, the the name of this tag team now, they got to stay together. Kid and Trey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Laredo, That's Kid, good. and Trey Miguel uh, took on Bullet Club. Bullet Club had Juice Robinson there. Steve's uh, favorite. Um, so Bullet <laughs> Club hits the art of finesse. Chris Bay hits that on Trey. Uh, and uh, Ace follows with the fold for the win yep. over Kid and Trey. Yeah, that's good. It is good. That's a good tag team name. Yeah, dude. Uh, after that, we had a Bupinder Gujar interview. He's asked how he's feeling after his brutal ladder match against uh, Brian Myers last week. I mean, the thing about Impact, they're they're just giving you awesome matches for free. Oh, dude. Well, yeah. I mean, you have to pay like a dollar for him on YouTube, but Ultimate Insider. 
Yeah, that's it's nothing. Well worth it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says he's feeling great after the ladder match. I'm suffered from a broken nose. I'm not clear to compete this week, but I will compete next next week. And I got my first taste of being close to gold at, uh, during that ladder match. So at Bound for Glory, I am entering the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match. Oh yeah, man. God, it's already been a year. Isn't that nuts? It's already been a year since uh, Moose did that shit. I know. Uh, after that, we had a Frankie Kazarian interview. This episode of Impact was also very, very talky. It was very talky, yeah. Yeah, everybody went, everybody talked like twice the amount they probably should have, including good old the future Frankie Kazarian here. He says, yeah. you know, uh, he says, you know, I'm at the stage of my life when I believe the only person you need to prove yourself to is yourself. He says, and I was in a triple threat revolver to prove my, to myself that I could hang with the current group of X Division superstars. Not only did I hang, I buried them all. I won. He said, I'm still a step ahead. And look, and what Scott Demore understands when you got a player who hits 300, knocks in 100 RBIs, and hits 30 home runs, that player guess, should be playing all the time, never on the bench. He says, right now, I'm officially in the game. He says, you know, Mike Speedball Bailey has been incredible X Division champion. But what Mike Speedball Bailey needs to understand is that Mike Speedball Bailey is playing a game that I created. I made this game. But at BFG, I'm hitting the reset button, taking back my X Division title, man. I started yeah, diving into, into Jesus from the Big Lebowski. I didn't know Frankie Kazarian invented baseball. Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. He's like, I created that game of baseball. I guess stick so. ball. That's what we called it back in the day. Stick ball. Uh, they, we go back Me to Me and Liam, we going to fuck you up. <laughs> they're, uh, they're, they're talking about Bound for Glory and one of Eric Young's uh, yellow guys in the yellow hoodie. Yeah, man. From Violent by Design tries to hop the barricade. Violence is his name, I think. Yeah, all their, are, they're, they're all named, their names are all, all violence. violence. <laughs> so violence from Violent by Design. <laughs> uh, try to jump the one. barricade. And then security uh, uh, apprehends him and takes him away. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, then we got uh, Crazy Steve versus Brian Myers for the digital media title. Uh, Brian Myers gets the win here, uh, hitting a close line on Crazy Steve. Afterwards, he drops a promo saying, in about three months' time of taking the digital media title, made it the most prestigious prestigious title in Impact Wrestling, but it's getting a bit too easy for me. Where's the competition? Where are the blue check marks? Hmm. Says, so at Bound for Glory, I'm issuing an open challenge. Come one, come all, step up to the most professional wrestler. So which blue check mark do you think? It should be Matt Cardona. <clears throat> oh, shit. That'd be messed up, man. That'd be messed up. He is a blue check mark, though. Yeah. He probably yeah. wants that title back. Yeah. What if he what if he what if he helped out the the the, the wifey? I know she's a knockouts uh, tag champion, but what if he shows up for the open challenge and Myers like, oh man, friend. And then uh, uh you know, then Cardona. Chelsea. Pokes him in the eyes and then Chelsea yeah. rolls him up and she's like, mm-hmm. I was the open challenge. It was me. Yeah. Yeah. That could be fun. Yeah, man. That could be good. Uh, after that, we had uh, Zicky Dice in uh, the Swing Man at Swinger's Dungeon. His dirty. This was, gross this was a little dungeon. awkward. And it was also long. <laughs> it was long and it was awkward. Yeah, this was really long. <laughs> it was really awkward. So uh, two, of the, two of the ladies that used to hang out at the, at the Swing Man's Palace show up. And one of them is his former fiance. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, I didn't know that. You got to be more specific, daddy, because I don't know. He's got some sort of, I don't know, condition where he can't remember shit, I guess. And uh, and he say, he suggests they have like a, a three-way. And then Zicky Dice is like, hey, man, let me get in on that action. And then they're like, no, you're gross. And then Johnny Bravo steps in. He's back. And yeah. uh, he's like, hey, you're talking to my wife. And when he said that, I actually audibly gasped. I went, oh. <gasps> <laughs> I was like, "Oh damn!" In the interim, they got married. That's nuts. <laughs> and then, uh, and then Taya is like, "Why does it smell in here?" And then Jessica's like, "This place is gross." But I mean, I just sort of like did the the clip notes versions of it. Yeah, it was pretty long. Yeah, it was pretty long. Uh, we got another Joe Hendry music video. Oh, this so is continuing great, the man. story of this family who's seemingly falling apart. <laughs> Thanks to Joe Hendry. <laughs> yeah, but also if you believe in Joe Hendry. Yeah. Like good things could happen. Well, if you say his name, then he'll show he, up. He peers and sings a song. He'll yeah. attack your father. He'll father your son or impregnate your wife or whatever. Yeah. And uh, and he'll take your, your family's fortune away yeah, from he'll, you. Yeah, he'll get all the inheritance money, yes. The inheritance money, yeah. I believe in Joe Hendry. 
But then it's they all stuff, cheer though. and clap for him. Oh, he's great, I know. man. I it's can't, a feel-good song. I cannot. It is. I cannot fucking wait for Joinder to be there. Yeah. Man. Same. Same. Yeah. Uh, then we get uh, Rosemary talking to the sinister minister, James Mitchell, backstage. Uh, Rosemary says, uh, we don't like coming to you with our problems, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Uh, she says, uh, we've been trying to sort out what's going on with Havoc. She's mm-hmm. acting like a human. And James Mitchell's like, yeah, yeah so what? She's human. And, and Rosemary says, who wants to be human? And Mitchell says, I got my own problems to deal with. Rosemary says, if we're going to win the tag titles, uh, I need Jessica gone. and I need Havoc back. And mm. just as she says that, Taya and Jessica walk in. And Taya says, oh, I, I, I really like Jessica. Mm-hmm. And Rosemary says, it's not about liking her, but Havoc is a warrior. And Jessica says, I've been trying to prove myself for, for weeks, months. I don't know what I have to do at this point to prove myself. And Taya says, listen, we all need to get on the same page. We need you, Rosemary, to believe in us and stop pointing the finger at us. Uh, you know, uh, are you in or are you out? And Rosemary says, all right, fine. We got a lot of work to do. Let's go get, get some training in. Yeah, man. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't like Jess- Jessica destroyed her opponent in her first match back as Jessica. Has there mm-hmm. been some failures along the way since then? I think it's more so just from interference during. Oh, I got uh, you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's because yeah. they, they ended up losing their tag titles, I think, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. So at least this is a situation where Rosemary's kind of in the right here, or at least she's got like a valid reason as opposed to Ed Edwards, who really doesn't have much of a valid reason to be always yelling at PCO. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, after that, we had Black Taurus versus Delirious. Uh, Taurus won with Destination Hellhole. Yeah. Uh, then oh. the the highlight of the show here. Oh man, Bob Fish, the most the most overpowered guy in wrestling. He kicked out. Did you see that? Still, I sent to you. I did. I did. <laughs> that dude's shoulder was firmly up when that ref's hand was like right here. <laughs> that takes that takes a lot of that takes a lot of moxie. To a kick lot out of moxie. Yeah. Didn't have my brain tonic that day. I guess not. So uh, Bob Fish has an interview. He says he's full of surprises. And as I said at Victory Road, I'm here to pick fights. I can think of no more better place to start than with the Impact Champion Josh Alexander. So I'm entering the Call Your Shot Contla match at Bound for Glory. That was about the energy level with which Bobby Fish delivered this promo to. Except he went on about five times longer. Yeah. <laughs> like at one the... point, what, he had like a natural end point, and then he kept on talking. <laughs> he was like, and then, and it's like, no, 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 you're good. You're good. No and then. No yeah, and then. No and then. No and then. Uh, after that, we had a Mia Yim interview. She says, well, I was shocked by Mickey's challenge, but we go way back. Mickey was one of the first names I wrestled when I broke into the business. She throws to a video of like some really grainy video footage. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah I don't know how old that was. This is like from 1996 or something. It wasn't that early. But uh, she, yeah, one of her early matches against Mickey. She says, you know, I was super intimidated stepping in the ring with her, but I'm not intimidated anymore. I respect her too much to take it easy on her. And then Giselle Shaw steps in. She says, why do you think you're the only one to get the job done? I said, if I couldn't do it, you certainly won't get it done. And then Mia says, you know what? I could use a warm-up, Mitch. And I, I could definitely get the job against you, done against you. And then Giselle was not too happy that she said that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then we got this Honor No More Victory Road Victory Celebration. I'll try to condense this as best I can. Oh, boy. Ed Edwards says, we're out here to celebrate how successful we were. If you have any doubts about us, we put them to rest. Still have doubts about UPCO. Uh, you had one job to soften up Motor City Machine Guns, and you failed. This is Ed Edwards' words. says, the problem is that you step up when you're not supposed to. Uh, who the hell do you think you are? I tell you when to step up, and I tell you when to, to step back and shut up. Um, so Vincent then puts like a, a sack over PCO's head, whispers mm-hmm. to him, and kind of ushers him out of the ring. Oh, man. So uh, they leave. And so Matt Taven talks. After that, Mike Bennett talks. Uh, Maria uh, kind of puts the punctuation on things. She says, I put together a video package to celebrate your win, and it's just from different angles, Eddie hitting his finish and pitting Josh Alexander. Yeah. No, mu- no music, nothing. There, just- sh- there should have been some comedic elements to this. I know. Like whenever Josh Alexander's back hits the mat, fart noise. Or wah, wah. Or like yeah, a whammy horns. shows up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what what what's the? Do you really want to hurt? There you go. Yeah, yeah that that happens. singing that song. That'd be great. <laughs> wow. So uh, Ed Edwards Far is like, uh, yeah, I've won at Victory Road. I'll win again at Bound for for Glory because our mission is righteous. Josh Alexander comes to the stage. 
Uh, he says, Eddie, you sound like a broken record. Uh, I'm going to call it like I see it. You're scared. You and Arno Moore are being afraid of being overlooked, passed by, or being insignificant again. Says, uh, to me, this is just the fight. We see the impact title differently. Eddie, you see this as job security. The way I see I see the impact title is whoever holds it is the best wrestler in the world. For me, our match isn't about some imaginary war. It's about finding out who is the best. Uh, Ed Edwards says they're going to regret not joining us. Um, walking into Bound for Glory, not only do I have the momentum, I come with I don't know more at my back. Meanwhile, you walk alone. And Ed Edwards says, well, Eddie, you should know better. When you turn your back on impact, this locker room and all the fans, uh, now I have, I fight for impact wrestling. I fight for the locker room, and I have the fans at my back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm, I will not be walking into bound for glory all, all alone. In fact, you'll be outnumbered Ed Edwards. And then Eddie Edwards says, well, if the numbers games favors you, then you have no problem coming to the ring and fighting all of us. And Josh <laughs> Alexander says, damn right. I don't <laughs> it just walks to the ring and gets his ass kicked. <laughs> uh, and then Rich Swan comes out, Keith comes out, Vincent brings back PCO yeah. motor city machine guns, join the fight. And everybody else fights out of the ring except Ed Edwards and Josh Alexander. Uh, uh, Josh steps up to Ed Edwards, and Ed Edwards just slides out of the ring. Just peters out, yeah. Uh, that does kind of lead to a match, though, because then we had Heath and Rich Swan versus PCO and Vincent. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, Swan gets the win here on Vincent, pinning Vincent with a Phoenix Splash. So another loss for Ono No More. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure Ed Edwards will blame that on PCO. Somehow. Uh, after that, we had a Moose interview. He says, you know, there was a deal between me and Macklin. He says, Macklin was to help me with Sammy. Then I'd help him win the call your shot gauntlet. But that deal is out the window because right now I'm making it official. I'm entering the call your shot gauntlet. And I just lost my pen. He says, in in eight days, I'm becoming a two-time impact champion. And then Macklin steps in, says no. And they start brawling and then security separates them. Yep. Uh, then Scott DeMars backstage telling the security guard to make sure Moose and Macklin don't make any more trouble. He turns around. Sammy Callahan's there. Missing Scott DeMars <laughs> lets out an audible <laughs> sigh. Uh, like literally the last person you wanted to see. Yeah. I wish he was selling the eye a little bit more like, oh, God. Can you like cover that thing up? It's disgusting. Oh, here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, so as Sammy Callahan says, I got unfinished business with Moose and Macklin. I want another match. And, and Scott Tamar's like, uh, you're not cleared? <laughs> Have you seen your eye, man? That's not going to happen. something going on there around the eye. And Sammy's like, oh, broken orbital boat. No huge deal. I want another match. <laughs> yeah. And so Scott says, all right, well, this is what I could do for you. Moose and Macklin next week. You put on a referee shirt, you can ref that match. And Sammy just goes, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll be the special guest ref. Have you seen my eye anywhere? It fell out of my head. Yeah, I'm surprised it's even cleared to ref a match. Like, yeah, you still have to be in there. Anything can happen. Yeah, I know. That thing was pretty, was pretty swollen. That thing was gnarly. <laughs> that yeah. thing looked horrible. Jeez, Sammy. Yep. And we had a main event. Masha Slamovich versus Ali Catch in a monster's ball bout. This I've got is- no debt perception. <laughs> I know. Can't see shit. Are you close to me or are you 50 yards away? I don't know. I can't tell. Where's the mat so I can count? <laughs> it could be thumbs funny. up, thumbs down. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> which one's up? Oh I, oh, I don't know which one. Uh, main event was fantastic. Oh, uh, a lot of crazy spots down towards the finish. Masha, Masha hits a, a, a leg sweep off the apron through a table ringside. She goes under the ring, gets a, a, a sack of thumbtacks, dumps it into the middle of the ring. She puts Allie up on her shoulders. Allie escapes that, hits a pile driver onto the pile of tacks. Masha kicks out. Before this, there's a bunch of other crazy stuff. Too. Yeah, like Allie, that, uh, Allie hit. The DVD uh, on the chair was gnarly. There was another DVD through the, through the, uh, the, t- the, the door. And yeah. uh, and Masha kicked out of that. Yeah, this, this is yeah. a crazy match. So after that, Ali dumps. Uh, there's a, a a garbage can. She dumps mm-hmm. it over, and it's full of cut up soda cans, which have been used earlier. <sighs> yeah, you know, just cut in half. And she dumps all those on the pile of tacks. Uh, Ali then blasts Masha with a trash can. Uh, Masha pretty much no sells that. They trade a bunch of strikes. Eventually, Masha hits a head kick, and then falls with a snow plow on the pile of tacks. And cut up soda cans to get the win. That name again is Mr. Plow. 
Man, that looked like that. Uh, that was a sick match, man. Yeah, this was, was awesome. this was awesome, was awesome stuff. Awesome. Go out of your way to check it out. This is great. Absolutely. Yeah, probably match of the week. Yeah, absolutely. We got SmackDown tonight, Steve. We got SmackDown tonight. Uh, first up, let me check my notes here. Thank God I didn't get these from the Enforcer. He's trash. Shotzi looks to disrupt damage control in a matchup against Bailey. Uh, Hit Row. Wait, no, take- don't interrupt. Hit Sorry. Row, what are you, the Enforcer? Hit Row is said to take on Los Lotharios down a peg. I think this is a match. Yes, inf- uh, Larson, Enforcer's can I read, friend. Can I, can I read the last one? Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. This is the best right. one. Ricochet and Madcap Moss go to war with Sami Zayn and Solo Sokoa. Thank you, thank you, Game Cerebral Assassin, King uh, of Kings. I didn't like that. You're trash. But last week, see, this is called advancing the story, you know, because Ricochet and Madcap, they were giving uh, Sami Zayn the business. And then Solo Sokoa came in, bang. He was like a sledgehammer to Ricochet and Madcap. So now they're going to go to war. So this is just a match. It's a war. It's going to be good. All right. He's hyped about SmackDown, that Triple H is. It seems that way. Yeah, man, absolutely. Anyways, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Hopefully, you guys have a terrific weekend. Yes, have a great weekend. And until next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.